as today is a big day because Ghana Black Stars are playing their last group game against Guinea-Bissau. The stakes are indeed very high. I've just been joined in studio by head of uh, group sports uh, here at TV3, Michael Otiege. Michael, uh, I know the permutations have already started. I saw uh, a joke somewhere on Saturday after the match. Uh, how crucial is this game? Well, it's, it's crucial, but I, I know people enjoy making jokes in the rest, but mm. this game really doesn't rely on a lot of permutations. It's is plain it? and simple. Okay. The Black Tell Stars win or mm. draw, they qualify for the next stage of the competition. Um, you don't need to work out any mass about what happens in another group, absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If the Black Stars win today, they finish in the top two of Group F. If they draw, they are likely to finish in the top three of Group okay. F, which wow. is better than, uh, and with a goal difference, uh, that is better than for South Africa, who occupy one of the top three spots right. in the third place. So we've now. just got to avoid a defeat. Basically, and the team will go through to the next uh, Which is likely to happen. I don't see Guinea-Bissau beating us. Unlikely. Um, but uh, we said the same thing in 20, 2006 when Ghana needed to win against Zimbabwe mm. to qualify for the next stage of the World Cup. I saw that game in Port Said in Egypt as well. And the Black Stars played one of the worst games I've seen in, in living memory mm. and, and lost that game, uh, a team that had just qualified for the World Cup. Now, uh, Guinea-Bissau have not looked like they will score goals. They've just looked like a team that will be difficult to break to beat, down. Right. So that will be a major difference. I've seen Kwesi Pierce line up, and it looks like he wants to score as quickly as he can mm -hmm. and settle the nerves. So Kwabno Uso is back in the side. Uh, it's, it's starting. He had a brief cameo against... Uh, he had a cameo against Cameroon and hit the bar. Uh, he's starting up front with Jordan Ayew. Um, at the back, major problem for Ghana because we are having to try a new centre-back pairing once again. But it's John Boy and Joseph Adu because Jonathan Mensah didn't recover from an injury that he picked up. So that may be... Uh, What's the difficulty area? with starting as a he, 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 he impressed... A little uh, in his match. I don't uh, think not as much as Kwabno Usu did. I also mm -hmm. think that at a certain level, you want pace, you want much sharpness, and I think it's obvious that Jordan and Kwabno Usu bring a lot more. The young one is something a lot of coaches will face. Mm -hmm. Legendary figure, he's, he's done great, but there's also a reason why this season his appearances for club are in the single digits. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not the same player that he used to be. He doesn't have the same energy. He doesn't carry the same threat which is why I think when you need a win at all costs, it's not exactly the best idea to be starting him in games. Michael, I've watched this tournament quite closely, and I think that I've been very much impressed with the North African teams. Do you sense that the Black Stars carry that weight? Um, not at this stage, but I also know something for a fact. In the last two or so Nations Cups, the team who have won were drawing two games in the group stages, winning one. Basically, in tournament football, you rarely find a side that starts in the manner of Egypt on the rest go on to win. Mm. When you get to the knockout stages as well, everybody starts on a clean mm. slate. The group stage, effectively, is a new set of qualifiers. Mm. When everybody gets to that round of 16, when you are paired one-on-one, -on -one, the pairings will work to some people's advantage. So Ghana could play Nigeria, mm. and if, you know, or Madagascar could play Tunisia, and Tunisia have played poorly, but mm. all of a sudden, Tunisia get one win, and Madagascar, who has such a wonderful build-up to this stage, all of a sudden then begin to look bad. Mm. So yes, Egypt have looked very good, I thought. Uh, not as good as Algeria, not as good as Morocco, Morocco. have looked. Mm. But in knockout football, a lot of things happen. And there will be teams like Ghana, Congo Dia, Senegal, who have not finished top of their groups, but who will be very, very difficult for any of these sides if push comes to Ahead show. of this tournament, I, I never got to hear you uh, take your pick, but... Do you still maintain your pick for the tournament? I thought Egypt would win simply because they are playing at home. They just, and I, but I've seen reason to to begin to doubt that they. I think they are vulnerable at the back, and and I think some strong teams may in the end beat them. But if any, I have to stick my neck out for anybody. It has to be Egypt. Right. Thank you, Michael Teja is head of uh, group sports here at Multimedia, and uh, we're going to bring you that much live here on TV Three. Media General, uh, head of uh, group here at Group Sports here at Media General.